Today, our classic car expert, Christoph Bauer, is taking an unusual American car out for a spin, the Chevrolet Corvair Monza Spider. Most American cars of its era boasted oversized bodies and a big engine up front, ideally a V8, but not the Corvair. Christoph says in the 1950s, sales of European cars rose massively in the U.S., especially those of the VW Beetle. It was the polar opposite of the kinds of vehicles American manufacturers had in their portfolios at the time. Suddenly, its design and technology was considered modern, progressive, even hip. But the American response to this demand was soon to arrive. It came in 1959 and was called the Chevrolet Corvair. Corvair. By American standards, the Corvair was a compact, even though at almost 4.6 meters, it's longer than a Mercedes Ponton. And its six-cylinder boxer engine with close to 100 horsepower didn't wow power-hungry American drivers that much either. But they were impressed by where the engine was located. The Chevy Corvair was the only American car of its day powered by a rear engine. Yeah, these are... Christoph says this exotic-looking car was surprisingly successful. More than 250,000 rolled off the assembly lines in the first year alone, and things got even better when Chevy introduced the Monza option, with a floor shift, bucket seats, larger hubcaps, and a bit more chrome. It was named after the Italian racing circuit. Soon, Chevrolet was selling more Monzas than standard models. The only thing missing was a stronger engine. But not for long, as Christoph explains. In 1962, Chevrolet presented an additional option, the Spider. And it was truly sensational, the first series production car to feature a turbocharged engine. Its 150 horsepower propels the car from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 10.3 seconds, with a top speed of 165 kilometers an hour. The turbo boost is only really effective in a relatively small range, between 3,000 and 3,800 RPM, but then it really kicks in. To make sure drivers could master and keep an eye on this innovative technology, the dashboard features what Christoph figures is likely the first boost pressure indicator in automotive history, though it tops out at just 0.7 bar, which he finds touching. But it wasn't just the Corvair's technology that set new standards. So did its design. This accent line, which wraps around the entire body, came to be known as the Corvair line. This design feature was later adopted by European manufacturers like BMW. The Corvair's design is a pleasant contrast to the American cars of the late 1950s with their huge tail fins and radiator grills. Its clean lines and purest design prove that some Sometimes less really is more. The Chevy Corvair was also versatile. In addition to the chic coupe, the Corvair was also available as a four-door sedan, a convertible, a station wagon, a pickup, and even a van, known as the Corvan. <laughs> but Chevrolet offered the turbo engine exclusively in the coupe and convertible versions. The Monza Spider came with five round gauges and a brushed aluminum instrument panel and a stick shift only, giving it the feel of a true blue American sports car. But Christoph says the Monza Spider's real highlight lies here, under the hood. Its 2.7 liter turbocharged engine, the first series production turbo in automotive history. Two paddle wheels rotate inside this casing here, driven by the exhaust, and then press the air and gas mixture into the combustion chamber. This engine delivers up to 70 more horsepower than the normally aspirated one, and all for a bargain price. In its day, the Spider package cost just $297 extra. It looks great. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work so well. It took Porsche and Saab to finally tame the turbo. The Corvair's engine, transmission, and drive gears are wrapped in one compact package, the Unipack Power Team. 
Though this construction doesn't exactly inspire confidence. Still, its turbo technology boosted Chevy sales. In 1962, more than 300,000 Corvairs were sold, making it the most successful year in the model's history. But Christoph knows that there was a small problem with the Corvair, or those who drove it. Unlike the solid and steady front engine boats Americans were used to driving, the rear engine Corvair had a dynamic but somewhat temperamental driving style. And some people couldn't cope with that. Especially on hard turns, the car's rear would jack up, causing the wheel to tuck under, the car to oversteer, and the rear end to swing out. To combat this effect, Chevrolet specified different pressures for the front and back tires. But many buyers thought this was just a misprint in their owner's manual, so the Corvair was headed for disaster. Chevrolet soon found itself facing more than 100 lawsuits resulting from serious accidents. The automaker worked frantically to make the car safer modifying the suspension and adding better drum brakes. But it was too little too late. Christoph says the Corvair's fate was sealed in 1965 when consumer advocate and lawyer Ralph Nader published his book, Unsafe at Any Speed. In it, he called the Corvair the most dangerous vehicle on the road. Sales plummeted, and in 1969, production of the Corvair ceased entirely. Christoph thinks that's a real shame. For him, its trend-setting design and its status as the first turbocharged mass production model make the Corvair Monza Spider a milestone in automotive history. In 1965, the Corvair range got a new body and the turbocharged engine was no longer offered. Quickly and quietly, Chevrolet relegated its pioneering series production turbo model to the history books.